All right, welcome everybody. This is I It's iBugs Live for July 20, 28th, I believe. Yes, I hope. Yes, yes. Okay, so um, we're so glad that you have joined us. We're iBug today. We're a nonprofit that provides various forms of training uh, and various social integration opportunities. So check out our website, ibugtoday.org, I-B-U-G-T-O-D-A-Y dot O-R-G. All of our services are free and available to you on Zoom or Clubhouse. Most of our events are on Clubhouse. So if you're here on this Zoom link, you can access all of our other events. We have training on the iPhone, the Mac, and Android devices. We have uh, iBug Night at the Virtual Movies, actually tomorrow at 8 o'clock. We'll be watching... We'll be watching Shakespeare in Love from 1998. It's a great movie. It's the winner of seven Oscars, audio described. And we have a little social time prior to the movie. And then we have discussion and trivia following the movie. So come and join us tomorrow if you'd like. Um, let's see, what else, what else? Uh, Monday nights we have uh, training on the iPhone from 7 to 9. Any questions relating to the iPhone or peripherals, keyboards, headphones, all that kind of good stuff or various apps that you might have issues with, we take care of that as well. All right, so with that, we would love for you to visit our website, ibugtoday.org, I-B-U-G-T-O-D-A-Y.org. There you can register for free and then you'll get all of our notifications of upcoming events and training events. And let's see, I think those are the highlights. So now I'm going to hand it over to George Batiste. George, are you there? You will have to un... Oh, no. All right, George, you should be able to unmute now. I was about to say, am I punished? <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> okay. okay. Hey, what's what's the name of the movie again tomorrow? I was doing some Shakespeare message. Shakespeare in Love. Shakespeare in Love. Okay. And so yeah, and I forgot we we're going to go around and introduce ourselves. So you could start out by uh oh for instructions a little bit of housekeeping. I'm sorry, I forgot. Uh so everybody should stay on mute if you're not speaking. That way we get a good, clean recording. And if you're on your Zoom app, if you want to mute or unmute the toggle, it's on the bottom left corner. If you're on your iPad, it's the top center. If you're on a Windows PC, it's Alt-A. If, if you're on a Mac, it's Command-Shift-A. If you're on an iPhone, it's Star-6. Those are the ways to mute and unmute. Uh, then, if we'd like, when you have a question or want to answer a question, please say your name and then wait to be recognized by George, by George. And then, then we have some order, not everybody's talking over each other. And what else? I think I forgot something else. Oh, yes. Okay. So we're going to go around and introduce ourselves. We'd like to know who's here. So you just please say your name and where you're from. And if this is the first time that you are joining, it's iBugs Life. So this is Sandia from Houston. You will have to unmute. This is Elisa and, oh my gosh. This is Elisa and Porter. All right, thank you. This is Helene in Woodstock, New York. Welcome. This is Dan in Southern California, and this is the first time I've joined. Hey, Dan. Life. Long time. Glad you're back. Okay. Good to have you. All right. Who else? This is Faye Wright from Atlanta. This is my second time joining you all. All right. Glad to have you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. This is Mary Witherspoon from Dallas, and this would be the first time I've done something other than listen to a movie. <laughs> Okay, very good. Glad to have you, Mary. Thank you. This Hope is you're... Ned from Texas. Hello, sir. This is Anthony from Mississauga, Ontario, Canada. Hey, welcome, Anthony. Nice to have you. All right, anybody else want to say hi? Uh, who you are, where you're from? Social security number? Well, no, 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 not necessarily. Just kidding, just Hi. kidding. Okay, um, go ahead. 
This is Rita Howells from hey, Illinois. Hey, Rita. Welcome. Hi. Hi. Teresa from Caledon, Ontario, Canada. Ah, welcome. Got some Thank Canadians. You. Thank you. Yeah. I guess. Do you Hi. Know uh -huh, yes, welcome. This is Debbie McDonald, Albany, Georgia. Albany, yes, we met you a couple of weeks ago. Glad to have you. Thank you. All right. Anybody else want to say hi? Okay, well, George. Michael we went... oh. from the Gulf Coast of Texas. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Welcome to you too, sir. All right. Anybody else? All right. Handing it over to the boss, George. It's all yours. You gonna give us some money, George? Huh. Hold on, let me go get my piggy bank here. I think I got two <laughs> pennies left in here. Oh no, piggy bank. <laughs> Wait, are we gonna win the lottery? Are you gonna tell us what to do if we win the lottery? Is that what we're doing? You know? Yeah, if anybody wins the lottery, remember my name. <laughs> remember where I'm at. Remember this voice. Hook all me up. Right. All right. Or it's all yours. Or just just give me a call. We'll work something out. I'll cook for you. I'll do whatever you want me to do. If you happen to win that 1.2 or 1.2, 1.025 billion, I think, bless her, it is up to you. Anyway, anyway, good evening, everybody. My name is George Batiste. I am in Houston, Texas for about the last, this 22, last 17, almost 17 years. It'll be 17 years in a couple of, well, at least in about a month. I'm originally from New Orleans, Louisiana. Uh, happened to be in Houston because Katrina decided to change my address and she kicked me out. I'm talking about Hurricane Katrina, not an actual person. Um, but anyway, I've been having, met some great people here since I've been here in Houston. People like folks who are running iBug. And um, I was going to say something else, but I don't remember. I um, actually, currently right now, I'm a vocational rehabilitation teacher with Texas Workforce Commission in the Blind and Visually Impaired Department. That is a whole mouthful. Takes up a whole page of a, of a, of a resume to say all of that. And what I do is, for those of you who probably have never heard of me or seen me, well, my videos also, you're not seeing me now either, but you've heard, heard of me before. The job that I do is, um, it's a state agency and some people come to the agency when they need like assistance. And the type of people that I work with are individuals who are either losing their vision or have already lost their vision and they need to learn alternative ways of getting daily routines done without too much obstacles or too much challenges. And this would, you know, basically I show them alternative techniques, whether they are working or at home. And this, it covers a whole lot of things. It can cover for how to, since you don't have any vision, how I'm going to be able to clean successfully or, you know, or, or correctly. I am going to prepare meals if I have a family, you know, I do still have to feed them, have to provide for them, or even have to feed myself. So we show, I, one of the things, when I say we, I mean me and people who also do the same type of work that I do, we show them how they can do all of these daily routines and tasks safely, even if it comes to repairing things. And if you are working someplace and your working requires some alterations or alternative ways of actually getting the job done, we introduce you to that as well. It could be some assistive technology devices or even some low tech stuff. So that's pretty much what I do. Um, some people that I actually have an opportunity to meet will um, have already probably on their own have discovered some ways of getting things done. So it kind of makes my job easier. And then there are other things that there are maybe some techniques or even devices, adaptive aids that they have never heard of. In that case, that's where I come in and step them in children. And it's been kind of a rewarding position to do because not only do I love receiving knowledge, I also enjoy sharing whatever knowledge and ticks that I can um, 
prevent this in one that could be helpful for them. So, and this is how we come with um, the people, the leaders of iBooks, Sandia and Michael, decided that this is how we come up with the platform of It's iBugs Life because it'll be a way of me actually sharing some not only experience, but sharing some how to do things that you probably thought that it was impossible for you to do. So hopefully I can enlighten you on that. Or um, maybe even some shortcuts, maybe a way of even enhancing or uh, you, however you are doing your daily routines. And then it's not only a teaching thing because sometimes I learn from you guys. You know, there may be some things that I am not aware of that I would get from those of you who participate in this discussion. And then I add it to my knowledge and my wealth of knowledge. And I even share it with some of the people that I happen to uh, work with. So having said all of that, this is how we came up with this iBugs Life. And I thought for this month, we will start talking. I know uh, the title of this is about financial literacy or independently handling your finances and your money, because that's something I think is extremely important. We all should be, be able to be responsible with how we're going to handle uh, the stuff that is very valuable if you are in this country. You know, I just realized that uh, since we have a couple of people calling here from Canada, that means I'm speaking internationally. I'm speaking across the water, not only in this country limited here. So welcome, Canada. And welcome to all of you who are also calling around this great country of ours. So first thing I would like to do is to start having a, a discussion about dealing with paper money. Sometimes that can be a bit challenging if, if you're like me, who don't have any vision at all. I was born with a condition called glaucoma, which I did have a little vision when I was little up until I was about the age of maybe six, six and a half, seven, I don't know. And it was a slow process that my vision progressively got worse until I didn't have any. Uh, so yeah, I don't have any vision at all, but I, um, I was fortunate and, and, and blessed to be around family and friends who will do whatever they can to show me how to still do things and do it independently. Yes, there have been some battles I may have to fuck with some things I may have to discover, but also at least they were willing to uh, show me how to uh, do it. I thought I, oh, that was my thing. <laughs> um, one second, now it says, okay, here we go. So, um, and one of the things that I do when I actually meet with someone, you know, uh, is what is the job I do? You know, I do an evaluation where I ask some questions about, you know, what they come to the agency for, what they need agency for, and what they need assistance with. So, uh, and one of the popular things that comes up is about handling money. So there's all different kinds of ways that I can introduce to you or even um, maybe create as to how you can organize paper money. Paper money, the reason why I think it's challenging because in America, all dollar bills are the same size. It, two inches by six inches, two inches wide, six inches long, or however you have it flip, it could be six inches long, two inches wide. It's all the same measurements, but there are printed numbers on there that tell you the different denominations. So there are various ways that you can learn how to organize it if you want to be able to be independently able to organize your currency. One, is some people, what I introduce, they call a folding method. Folding method is, because remember how it says all paper money in the US currency is all the same size. Uh, your ones, your fives, your tens, your twenties, your fifties, one hundred, they all have the same length and width. 
Now, what I may do to some individuals who are new to blindness, we can introduce what we call a folding method, meaning you could take different denominations and fold them a certain way. For example, let's say you have a one, five, 10, and a 20. You could take your $1 bill and fold it long ways. And that, anytime you get a one, you keep all your ones folded that way. One, you know, long ways, meaning you take the long, the, the length part, part that's like the six inches, fold it over once, and that could be your ones. If you have a five, you can take and fold it the other way two times. And you could take your other wheels and fold it another way. Uh, you can fold it like three times. Now, there is no perfect method or perfect system. I may introduce that but whatever is most comfortable for that person, I'm gonna let them stick with that. Somebody may wanna fold their $20 bills the long ways, like the first one I have mentioned, and fold their tens the uh, uh, you know, two times or three times or whatever. Whatever system is gonna be most comfortable for them, I tell them to go ahead and stick with that because it's gonna be your system after I leave or when everything gets over. Let me ask this, discussing that, anybody, you know, come off mute, if you practice doing paper money that way, or do you use, or if you use a different method, tell me what do you do to keep, to keep Jody? Up, organized with your paper currency? Ms. Jody? Go ahead, Jody. Yes, I, uh, I leave my ones open, you know, full length, full size. I fold my, my five a third over and then my tens in half and my twenties lengthwise. But I generally like to carry ones and fives. It's, it makes things a lot easier to, you know, I usually ask for my, my change in ones and fives to keep things straightened out that way. But yeah, I do, mm -hmm. I do definitely use the folding method. And then are you going to talk about identifying current currency? Should I skip that or? No, no, stay right there. Let me see if anybody else does anything different or do okay. they even knew about that. Anybody else have, okay. want to comment or have a question? Hey, Lisa. Go ahead, Lisa. So I do have a question. What's your question? Las preguntas. Oh, God. <laughs> Don't start. Okay. Didn't think I knew that, did you? No, go ahead. No. I'm sorry. So I Desktop. thought the... Okay. Desktop. Oh, my God. What's that? That's not okay. you. Go ahead. Text 2000 and Z. Somebody's typing. Uh, go ahead and hit mute if you're on a computer. Well, I hear Do, it uh, going. Okay. I can't even say what I'm going to say because I hear that. Oh. Okay. Go ahead, Alyssa. You can go ahead. Um, I thought that the ones you could just put them in your pocket or anything as flat. Well, here's the thing. Like uh, like straight up, yeah, straight you up can flat do that. Ones. You can put it in your pocket. I'm just indicating that I may introduce that method, but whatever's going to be most comfortable, if you have a system already in place, stick with that. But, you know, sometimes I get folks and they have no idea, you know, what to do. So, but if you put your ones or whatever it is you want to put in your pocket, you can do that as well. Like me, I may have a left pocket that I may designate to be like my tens and twenties and my right pocket, I may let it only be the ones. I've done that before. Because I thought the, don't, don't the fives, you fold them over a certain way and then the twenties, the it's like a mini 20 or something like that. Yeah, whatever you going to work. Or am I losing you. my mind? Because I, I see, I have done paper money before, but it's been forever. Okay, no, 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 you're good. Whatever's going to work for you, stick with that. There is no cutting, you know, sign that is, this has got to be the right way. Anyway, whatever you're doing that helps you to keep up with it, that's going to be your way of doing it. Now, this somebody else like Jody may have a different method. So, but, you know, nobody's way is more right mm -hmm. than the other. Okay, so if it's working for you, stick with that. I don't want to change anything that's working. Now, if you had not had any idea that I may introduce something, and then whatever I may introduce, you may change it, which is perfectly fine. It's almost like driving. You know, there's everybody has the, you know, there's certain rules 
that you have to abide by when driving, but everybody gonna have this style of driving. That doesn't make anybody driving any more right than the other. Um, this is, this is Rita. Um, Go ahead, Rita. Might I, might I suggest you uh, complete your presentation and then take questions so you could get the content covered? Uh, or do you want well, questions? Uh, just on that aspect, you know, I, I got it because we, we are going to move on. I just want to make sure that I, before I move on that I cover just that part. If anybody had questions about it, I thank you. Anybody okay. else have a comment? This is Mary. Okay, Mary. I just have one point. Um, the person who taught me the folding method said that if somebody gave me change, and of course they're going to hand it to me all in unfolded bills, mm -hmm. that because I don't want to mistake something for a one dollar bill when it's actually a ten dollar bill i fold my one dollar bills in half so i mm -hmm. can identify them so anything that's unfolded that somebody gave me and i haven't identified myself i'm assuming it's a 10 and so i'm not likely giving that to somebody or as one so that's Absolutely. just kind of a caution that i like you know with the way that i've adjusted my folding method um, okay. Just so that I don't hand somebody a, a, a bill thinking it's a one, but it was a 20 or a 10. Absolutely. Absolutely. Great. Great. Okay. Now, let me bring up another thing to the forefront as I move on. Now, we talk about, you know, organizing using the folding method. There actually are some devices that you can use to also help I not only know what your currency is independently, but help you to organize. Now, one thing that I do before I start talking about apps, I'm not talking about apps yet, because yes, we do have apps that we can download on our smart devices that would also help. But there is a device called an iBill, I-B-I-L-L, -L, that I think is for is like a manual thing. It is efficient and it is quick. You can actually pay for these, they are available at a, at a website called blindmicemegamall.com. I think he sells them for like about $96. Um, you can buy them from other like MagSafe places that they sell them. Or if you have a subscription with one of your coordinating libraries, now this is only in the US, I don't know how it is in Canada, but if you have a subscription with them, you can get one of those for free from the Library of Congress. All you have to do is contact your coordinate library, let them know you like to get that bill identifier. That's how they label it. And they can have one sent to you free. Uh, uh, sometimes you can go to the different um, advocacy organizations, national convention like NFB and ACB that just passed. And they usually have a table available in their exhibit hall where you can, you can complete an application which they just basically get your name and phone number and mailing address. And one would be shipped to you that you should get, I think, because I even had done it. I think I had gotten one within like, I think, a month. Uh, it may take a little longer in other places. I'm not going to give you a definitive direct amount of time it would take to be received. But that's how you can get a free one. Elisa? And what this device is, uh, hold on, Alyssa. This is one device. It's about the size of, I was about to say a matchbox, but that might be too old school. A lot of you probably don't even know what, about that. Well, some of us will, um, but it's like about, I would say maybe two inches in width. And it has a way that you can take the end of your paper money, slide it underneath like a little plate area that, you know, it'd be flat up against the device. And then it's also a cover and you will take the end of the dollar bill as far as back you can get it evenly. And then there are two buttons on the side, on each side of the device that you can press either one or both. And when you press it within like a second or two, it's going to tell you the denomination of the bill. It'll tell you what if it's a one, a five, a 10, a 20, all the way up to 100. And that, that's one main way. It's, it's a good device. It only takes, I think, like one AAA battery. They even have enhancements to it. They even have a headphone jack if you want to keep, um, you know, privacy that that's what you're doing. Um, but it, it's, it's a great device that I advise device that I do recommend that everyone probably have in their possession. Now, of course, there are all sorts of apps. If, if some of us have like iPhones or Android phones that you can use, uh, one that I know of that I use more often 
is the Scene AI app. And in the Scene AI app, you know, it, it, that app has many features. You can use it to not only to read like short text, like sheets of paper, uh, scanning envelopes, uh, reading um, product information, produce information, no product information you buy in the store. It, it is scan a barcode and read it to you, but it also has a currency reader. And then not only does it read US currency, I think it reads international currency as well. Now, I don't have any international currency, so can't demonstrate it, don't know how effective it is, but I know it does work when you tap on the CNAI app and you tap on, you slide about one thing and go to the part where it says recognize currency. All you got to do is put the bill in front of the back facing camera. And if you don't have it uh, folded up too much, and when it recognizes it, it'll tell you 20 or 10 or five or one. That's another effective way. Has anyone heard of um, that app and knows about that feature within that app? This is Jody. Yeah, Jody. Yes, I use it. I use that app all the time. You can also go to settings and go and set up a shortcut. So you can just tell uh, SIRI, uh, you know, to, to open the shortcut to, to look at currency or any of the other channels on seeing AI. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, someone who is an Android you? user, is it called? Or Michael Sunny, if you guys know, is it called something else on Android? Is it still seeing AI? The name of the app. That's what I forgot. I don't know if it's Envision AI. Is that the counterpart for Android devices? This is Jody. I don't think seeing AI is available for Android. I think there might be a different app. Okay. Um, Alyssa, you had a question, I think, when I was talking earlier. Lisa. Go ahead. So say if you so if you work with the vocational rehab teacher like you, mm -hmm. y'all can also purchase it for us, or am I mistaken? That's a discussion I will say definitely have with your counselor that they probably can, you know, I'm not gonna say yes or no. I said it's a judgmental oh. thing. They can probably get it. Um, you know, I would never say don't ask for it because the worst thing it can tell you is no. Uh, that might be a more a faster way of getting it. That's a good question. You know, if you want to have them to get that for you and then if they can order it, you know, they probably will go through like the purchase websites that I had mentioned where you can get it. And that way you can probably get it in a short amount of time. Then like they recommended that, or at least the one that I mentioned about going through your coordinated library. So I would say ask for it. This is Helene. Hey, Helene. Um, I would say that the folding method is much better than the currency identifier because I got that about five years ago for free when they were sending them out and mm -hmm. someone, someone, you know, sent it to, and I, so I got this for free. And if you're online or someone gives you money back as change, you can't stand there because it, if it's folded in, not if it's not crisp enough as a bill it doesn't identify so it just says error and you have to get it in properly and it's not an efficient way to handle your money so what i do is i usually ask the person you know who is giving me back the money you know which are the fives which is the ten which is the ones you know and then i organize it the way um i was taught you know, I keep this, I happen to keep the singles just straight across. The fives I fold in half and the 10 I, I triangle, triangulate. I put little triangles on the corners and, you know, the 20 I fold in half and then in half again. So I know where all the 20s are in my, but when I get, if I did have a larger bill, I have to be more creative about how I'll fold it. But the currency thing, I would sooner call be my eyes and say, what's this bill saying? Um, or super sense. Um, um, I don't use seeing AI, but I'm sure I should. But I use uh, be my eyes mostly and um, super sense. Okay. Thank you, Helene. And again, like I say, there, there's no 
perfect ever. Whatever works for you as an individual, I will say stick with it. I'm not here to try to change someone's strategy, whatever's working for you. Uh, I'm just mentioning some things right now in case someone is not informed of it. And, you know, and you're suggesting what you're doing, that actually works well. Because, yeah, there are some times that even myself, uh, if I want to be quick about it, if I'm around, especially if I'm with a sighted person who can definitely point that out for me, I'm going to ask them. That's that's about the most quickest and efficient way as possible. And depends on the surrounding, even the stranger can even help. Like if you're in line at a grocery store or something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, for the most part, folks do not mind helping at all. They definitely are very helpful. Mm hmm uh, let me take this time to do right now before anyone else talk, because I noticed that the amount of people that we have in the room has increased. So anybody who at the beginning didn't get a chance to introduce yourself and tell us where you're calling from, let's do that now. If you didn't uh, say your name at the beginning where you're calling from, I want to know who else is in the room. Tony from New Hampshire. Okay, got you. Anyone else? Lori, New Jersey. Hi, Lori, New Jersey, great. Anybody else? I think it was a couple more. If you didn't get a chance to introduce yourself. Okay. All right, did anybody? Uh, uh, Halim also had mentioned about Be My Eyes, which is also a great resource, or Ira, if you subscribe to them. And if you just want to recognize anything that's written down, including currency, they also are a great resource that you can turn on that app. And uh, when someone comes aboard, you can ask them, hey, what's this dollar bill? And they would definitely help with that. So that's a couple of more apps that you can use um, as far as like recognizing paper currency as we, if you're not using the uh, folding method. Or you can do a combination of it all. Go ahead. Yeah, I just wanted to also mention, I don't know if you're going to mention it, but the iNote app, which is spelled E-Y-E-N-O-T-E, -E, so is an app that's available from the Treasury Department. Uh, that's It's a free app, and I use that actually more than seeing AI for identifying currency. And you can hold it up and it will say $5 front, $5 back, whatever. It'll identify the direction. Oh, stop your video. Video so, now, stop the alert. So I, uh, I, I highly recommend the iNote app. And again, it's free and it's from the Treasury Department. And that, I think that's all, also available for Android and iPhone. You know, I'm glad you mentioned that because I, I didn't know how it was spelled. I used to try to get that app and look for it. And if I was putting Yes, my, that's why I spelled I, it because I thought it was I, I like iPhone, but no, it's E-Y-E-N-O-T-E. Because mm -hmm. I've seen that, that app be demonstrated and it does work well. Oh, it's but great. I just because really I, I was spelling great. the thing wrong. That's why I don't have it. So I'm gonna ah, go ahead and grab okay. that because I like having all of them. So thanks for mentioning that. Sure. Excuse me, this is Katrisa. Um, hey, Katrisa. I knew, I knew a guy. I knew a guy that had a vending route, um, a vending stand in my community, and he's blind. And this is before we came up with all these cell phone apps. But um, he used to fill the corners of his dollar bill, and he could find he um he could identify it was a five or a one or ten. I tried to do that, and it was just difficult for me to do that. I um I have yet to find out how he done that. I have I done it. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah, I I I I don't, I don't know how he has done that, but um so and and also I have a check writing guide. The only thing about um, is balancing my checkbook. I could have to do it on the computer. I have to go to a uh, spreadsheet on my computer and and balance the app, or just go to my home. Um, or you know, I have the online banking, and I know that the internet is is a very good tool to use because you have all these apps and um uh that can scan. You know, if you have if you have a phone. Um, um, it, I find that the phones are very useful, but you know everybody needs a I, I everybody needs a touch screen cell phone to identify your with the apps to identify your dollar bill. If you don't, I swear you need to get one. Um, we need to find a program or something where people could get free touch screen phones that are blind. I know that we have 
when I, I guess they're still um, up and running. We had a um, um, they had a grant with through AIDB where they uh, they could give away you uh, sign up for a free phone, and you know uh, if they're good enough, they could you could use those apps. Okay. Okay. So how do y'all balance y'all's checkbook? Okay, we're we're getting to that. Um, Michael, matter of fact, that's that's gonna be my next topic is to actually talk about banking. But go ahead, Michael. Yeah, uh, regarding apps. Uh, so I think probably most people on here are Apple, but you did ask a question about Android, and so an app that's uh, similar to the iNote, EYE Note, on Android is called Ideal Currency. I D E A L currency, and then they also have the something that's just called the cash reader and MCT reader. I'm not sure what the MCT stands for, but those are the ones that I'm aware of. I have the um, I have the let's see it, a let let's see app, and I also have the lookout. The look at Google. Look oh, yeah. Out. yeah. Yeah. Lookout is similar to uh, seeing AI on Android, which has that function. And then um, on the Let's See app, they have a thing where you could scan your cards and you could uh, identify your card. You got to scan it and name it. And then um, you can identify your cards like that. And it also has a currency identifier on it, too. Yeah, and I was just going to take a guess for the guy that you mentioned uh, that had the, whatever the magazine stand or newspaper stand. Uh, I'm guessing that because ones are used most often, he could tell that that was probably worn a, a little bit more. I mean, obviously it won't work for a brand new bill, but then fives are less would probably be a little bit less and tens even a little bit less. So he could just based on feel of how worn the corners were, would just have a pretty good idea if it was a one, five or 10. No, I'm good at alert. Well, when I had a vending stand, I, I, um, I was real good at mental math. And so like, if I was paying for something and I, like if, um, if somebody's giving me change, like if I gave you a 20 and the, the cost was like, seven dollars um i could like um if it was seven dollars and something cents then i knew it was like um twelve dollars so like sometimes they may give you two two fives and two ones those are four bank notes or they may give you a ten and two ones which are which is three bank notes so uh, and some change and I can kind of mm -hmm. tell the the sequence, but I can't. I still can't identify the actual um, banknote unless I have a scanner or or money on my um the the scanner or the I do I know I recognizer. Yeah, I've I've heard um, people have tell me that they knew somebody that was able to tell the denomination of the bills by feeling them, but. Not that I'm going to doubt anybody. I just know I can't because it all feels the same to me. <laughs> right. Michael, again, uh, I don't know if, it, does anybody know, you know, there was legislation and I thought it was for 2024 to change the currency so that, you know, they're different denominations or different sizes. Off the top of my head, that story does sound familiar. I think it was even approved that they are going to do something to where uh, I, don't, I don't remember the exact technique or what they're going to do. I remember seeing a presentation where someone was introducing an idea where it was going to put like uh, some type of raised circles on the paper money as a way of being able to, uh, not raised circles, raised like markings that you'd be able to tell the difference between uh, which currency is which by touch. And whether that's been approved and when it's going to come out, that's what I don't know. So I, what you're hearing, I, I have heard something like that before. I just haven't heard the official release date of it. Anyone else have any knowledge of that? This is Jody. Hey, Jody. 
You know, I think it'd be really in Canada. They know they have different sizes, but they have Braille on their on their money too, and that it, it just makes so much sense. But their money is is has more of a plastic feel than U.S. money. And by the way, I did order one of the money identifiers through the library, and it took 18 days to get it. They, yeah, they wanted me to they, they wanted me to keep track so that I could tell them how long it would take. So <laughs> it took 18 days. And the there other thing gonna, the other thing I was going to comment on is a lot of um, credit card now credit cards now uh, offer braille uh, credit cards. I've got a discover card and my number on it is written in braille. Yeah, but they, that has something that has been started. I forget when, I know within the last seven years, I know if yeah, anybody really has, cool. an account with, has an account with Wells Fargo, I know you can have your numbers in Boston braille on the card. And I think I have seen someone who have, you know, where I'm starting to notice now most of the credit cards or even debit cards don't even have the embossed tactile print numbers on them either. Uh, they, everything seems flat, which I'm so accustomed to having to raise numbers because when a long time ago, when my sister taught me how to write the print letters as well as numbers, I'm able to, if anything is raised, I can feel, I can use like my fingertip or even my fingernail and trace it. And I can be able to actually read my own credit card numbers even within print because I know the shape. I know how it is, how it is drawn. Oh, wow, that's neat. Yeah. 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 And, and, uh, and, and, it, it, if it, and if they don't offer Braille, I'm oh, sorry, this is Jody. If they don't offer Braille, they do offer a way they can curve the edge or, or square off the edge so that you're gonna, mm -hmm. you know, you can tell that. And it, of course you can do that yourself too. Correct, correct. But on the Wells Fargo card, instead of even having to raise tactile numbers, they actually will replace that with Braille. And it does not interfere with the electronic, you know, chip that's in the card, you know, as far as for you, for you use your card anyway. So I know Wells yes. Fargo does it. Like you mentioned, Discover, Discover has yep. it. I uh, haven't seen a Chase one yet. I know that's one of the popular banks or Bank of America. I'll take that back. Bank of America do offer. I saw someone uh, they showed it to me that they even offered the embossed braille uh, credit or debit cards now uh, since we do have a couple of uh, Canadians this, online yeah oh go ahead Anthony uh, go ahead from, Anthony, Can yes. from okay. Canada the currency bills in Canada don't have braille they just have a, a number of dots so for five for ten for twenty the number of dots in a line increase that way you don't have to know Braille in order to read oh, the okay. currency well, that's a good number idea. that you have. We also, in the long time in the past, have done away with uh, single dollar bills. We have a coin for that. So that uh, really the bills start at 5, 10, 20 and go up. And I think because Canada uses a more of a polymer or a plasticized kind of bill, the dots that they have, they're in a row. So you have one dot, then two, then three, just in a line. So three is going to be 20. And I think because it's not paper, the plastic holds those dots uh, more firmly for a longer period of time. It might wear down on just a straight paper type of currency. But that's what Canada is using now. How long does it last? Does those dots stay raised up? You know, can they survive the wear? Or the, if somebody lives a rigid purse, like if you fold them, you know, did it stay pretty uh, firm? It, it stays pretty firm. Uh, as I say, if you feel the difference between an American 20 and a Canadian 20, the Canadian, it feels more plasticized. It's uh -huh. a shinier surface. So I believe that the dots that they've embedded in a, in a line of three stays more, uh, more readable for a longer period of time. Okay. Okay. Great. Great. Anybody got any know? Other questions or comments, or even questions for Anthony? <laughs> okay. All right, let's move on to monitoring accounts. I think since, um, and please don't shoot me, I forgot your name. You was asking about writing checks or balancing accounts or keeping up with that. That's what I'm talking about now. So, uh, uh, um, Monitoring accounts or now, of course, these days, and I know some people still practice, you know, writing out checks. I actually don't recall the last time I even attempted to write, write out a check, but I do know you can go to your bank. There are such things as raised line checks. These checks 
are a lot, they're bigger in size than a regular check. Um, I don't have the dimensions on that. I didn't look that up and I haven't seen it, but I do know they have like a raised line for the signature line. There's also a raised line for the memo section. There's also a raised line if you're actually gonna write out the numeric amount, you know, spelled out, as well as a raised line for writing the actually um, numeric number. And this is a way, you know, for someone who probably had some vision before and then of course it went and you still have good penmanship, they, some folks are able to still actually legibly write out a check. You know, I, I think that's amazing if you still recognize and have, uh, good enough handwriting to fit all that in there. I normally, what I've done when it comes to writing checks, I am I know where the signature line is at. And of course, I also have a signature guide that I carry around as well. But I can always go right to where the signature line is at and put my signature on it. And depends on where I'm presenting a check to, if it is a place, if it's a, a merchant, a wholesale store or something like that. Some stores have come with a part where they have, where they can actually type in the information on the check itself. They can stick it into their little machine that's attached to the cash register and they can press a button and it will in input the information that needs to go on there. You know, the amount, the name of the place and all of that stuff, all they need is your signature, which I thought was a great deal. Now I haven't seen it in a while. I don't know if it still exists, but that feature is available or have someone with you that can help write it out for you. Now, when it comes to about monitoring accounts, I encourage and I, I encourage everyone remember this is your finances to if you can I, I probably have gotten like this because I used to work for a bank and I worked for a bank for 10 years 10 and a half years when I was in, living in Kansas City Missouri I actually check my account through the automatic phone line that's one way that uh, you know that's where you can call the auto response unit put in your account number or your credit card number, debit card number, and put in a password, and then the auto response lady will tell you all the information that you would need. Uh, they also will give you instructions that if you want to know what your withdrawals were, you can press you can press this button. If you want to know your um, deposit, you can press that button. You know, things like that. If you want to do a transfer, you know they give you all kind of instructions that you can do through the telephone system uh, you know, independently. Um, and so from time to time, I will do that. Now, there also is a way if you have access to the internet, whether it's on your computer, iPad, laptop, or smartphone, you can actually, most of the major financial institutions, websites are accessible. I think a lot of organizations, uh, advocacy organizations have fought for that too much that now it's become like a standard practice that if you're going to look at your accounts online, it should be extremely accessible. Yes, there's still going to be some graphics and some pictures and things on there for the sighted world to look at. But for the most part, all of your um, important essential information, you should be able to maneuver and read it as such as reading your statements, reading your, uh, in, um, your withdrawals, your deposits, any type of transactions that you may have done with your card should be accessible to read with any type of screen reader. Uh, if, if, if it's not, I do know most of the major banks. Now, I know there are tons and tons of banks all over this world, but I know what the major banks they are willing, if you want to, if you are a Braille reader and you want to be able to read your statements independently, they will provide you that service of putting your bank statement in Braille. Um, and then if, if, if you are not a Braille reader, this is where I think I have it also in my outline. Establish a relationship with a personal banker. Personal bankers are the people, not the tellers, not the people who are behind you may have three or four of them behind a counter where they do like quick transactions. If you wanted to deposit a check, if you want to cash a check, if you want to get smaller bills or make a quick withdrawal, something like that, those are the tellers. The personal bankers are the individuals who sit behind a desk and um, to go over 
all sort of uh, banking information with you, banking services, different products and services, where if you want to know about whatever type of um, services that they have to offer, they can go over there with you. Or if you have noticed some strange activities on your account, they will go over there with you. That's what they're there for. Kind of like your personal representative of you know discussing your affairs. Um, so I will say, uh, if, if, there's a, if there's a branch that you visit more frequently than others, uh, establish that relationship with them because you can even call them. They will give you their business card with their direct line. And if you have questions about something, uh, they will go over that for you and go over that with you. Uh, so that, that's one thing I do recommend. Uh, that, that's for the personal bankers. They, again, they sit behind a desk. Sometimes you may have to stand in line. You know, if, if it's a busy hour in a lobby, they will take your name down and when someone is available, they will call you up or call your name and then they will come and walk you to their station. Uh, that way, if you need a check written out, they can assist you with that. If you wanna know about other services with the bank, they can go over that with you or refer you to that person. Uh, so, and if you um, need to, you know, get other type of uh, price, uh, what I'm looking for. If you want to like have a money order join up or a cashier's check join up, things like that. And you, you, if you don't have any vision, you're not able to fill out the paperwork on your own, they will help you with that. Anybody got any questions or comments on that point? Of course, like monitoring your accounts and establishing meet with a personal banker. Is, any, is anyone doing that? This is Jody. Hey, Jody. I just wanted to say, you know, I've got a little tiny local savings bank that I use for my checking account and they have an app that's accessible. Like the only thing I can't do on it is if I have a check to deposit, you have to be able to take a picture of the check and that won't work with voiceover, but the whole rest of the app works great. I'm, I, you know, keep track of my account that way. Uh, you can also use a bank if you need something notarized. That too, exactly. I've done that too. Oh, and that's and, and what Jody just mentioned. Yeah, even a lot of the apps are fully accessible. Like I, I, I actually right now currently we use two banks. And both of the apps that I've downloaded, and sometimes they do encourage it. I think they encourage that because uh, you notice with a lot of companies, things, people are downsizing as far as like live person. So that's why you hit them promote, go to our website, go to our .coms or our .orgs or download our free app which is available at the tip of your fingertips. And most of the apps are now extremely accessible as far as like being able to read all your transactions. Um, if it's something that you're unfamiliar with, you know, you can call and if you need to do a stop or dispute a transaction, that's even possible. Okay. Now, there are also some other features that I want to mention. I, I want to uh, right now apologize to you guys in advance. I don't know if you guys, I don't know if it was in the email that was sent out. I was going to have someone to come on here because uh, one of the things I, that I, I'm passionate about, I have a great concern about is, um, I know I had mentioned at the beginning about financial uh, literacy because there are all kinds of things that are out there that we can do as far as like help, uh, you know, increase in our finances or just have knowledge about different things. And I had a person who was going to come here and discuss like investments and discuss stocks and all kinds of type of um, other financial stuff that is beyond me. But this person was extremely knowledgeable. I actually, that's why I was checking to see if maybe that person had joined us, but they're not. I did re receive an email that he sincerely apologized, said he can't make it. He got called into work at the last minute and by his boss. Now, you know, sometimes it depends on the kind of work you do when your boss calls. Sometimes you just have to uh, answer to that call. And so, because I had like a great line of questions and I was having, having to present material to you guys as well, as far as like talking about, you know, stocks and shares and 
uh, all kind of uh, bank trend uh, or financial transactions that hopefully that we can even consider doing, how to even monitor stuff like that. Um, I'm looking into that more, but I don't have enough knowledge that I can intelligently provide information regarding that particular aspect of it. Uh, so, but he, he did say he's going to be available and we probably will present that particular platform, that particular material at another time, or I may even uh, talk to him, write up something and have it posted on the iBug Today website. Well, you know, I'll submit it to Michael and Sandy and they can consider it for to put on there that everybody can read up on it. But I do know there are some other bank things that I think people that I do have a little knowledge about that I would advise people to probably look into acquiring, such as, first of all, let me ask the question, has anybody heard of something called a CD? I'm not talking about a CD, it's something that we used to play music on. If anyone have heard of that term at all, we'll send for a certificate of deposit. Yes. Okay, anybody has not? Okay, just in case somebody is shy, uh, getting a CD, if you can do it, you know, it all depends on if you have the resources to, in, to acquire one of those. This is another way of actually having like a savings account, except you can earn a lot more interest on the CD than you can just a regular savings. Um, some certificate of deposits, and usually most of your financial institutions have those. You can get them in terms. They can get them like one year, two years, three years, even five years. And you can take an, allot an allotment of amount of money, get one of those. Let's say you get a one-year certificate of deposit, a one-year CD. CDs have something called a yield, which is just like an entrance rate. And that yield, whatever you put in there, let's say you put in $1,000. I'm just gonna, I'm just drawing numbers out of the air, not telling nobody what to do, what to get. You take $1,000, a yield may be at, I'm just gonna pick another number, 5%. Now, 5% of that, they will take and multiply it times that whenever the yield, you know, accrues, sometimes it can be like every three months, whatever the amount is and whatever you put in there, that's gonna get added to the principal of your CD. It's, and the rates are usually a lot higher than a regular savings account interest rate. And now the one thing is when you do purchase one of these and you do it for one year, you cannot touch it for until that year is over. And what you get, if you put a thousand, whatever that yield is, whatever the percentage rated of that particular one year CD, that gets added to your principal. And you can either withdraw the principal because you've earned that, you earn a lot more money, whatever it's 200, 300, 500, however it must, you know, it calculated too. You can add that to that or put it into like a regular checking account, whatever, do it if you want to do it. Or you can add it to your CD and reinvest it in there and you can get more money. Uh, and then you, that way you can renew if you want to do one more year or you want to change it to five years. Now, if something emergency happening, you do have to withdraw your CD before it matures before that year is over with, there are some fees and penalized. And it also could help on how much you could have accrued on it as well. So it's always good if you can put that aside and it's a way that you can actually earn uh, some extra money at a more better rate than just putting something in a savings account. Savings accounts, interest rates are usually very small, not that much. And then you probably gain it just like every three months but the rate is not as big. And then again, they got, like I said, they got one year, they got five years, they got 10 years. Um, I had a coworker when I used to work at the bank in Missouri, who I think when her, I think she had a 15 year old, she just took $500. And this was back in like 1999, I think it was. And just for him, so he can have something when he graduate or when he goes to college, whatever it was, she took $500 and she purchased a five year CD for him. So whatever that rate, whatever the cruise over those years, she can hand that all to him and he can do whatever he wants to it. He can either cash it out, spend it, or he can put it back in there and, and gain some more money from it. Anybody got any discussion about certificate of deposits? Um, this is Rita. Hey, Rita. Uh, hi. <laughs> okay, just a... 
uh, for a few years now, I've been chasing returns to try to get, you know, higher return on the savings that I do have. Mm -hmm. And um, CDs for the last, you know, five years have been really dismal, you know, under 2%, um, you know, for, you know, giving them your money and then they loan it back out again for six mm -hmm. to 10%, <laughs> you know, so you're, you're getting very little on your, the savings that you do have. Mm -hmm. um, I have been doing a lot of reading and recently purchased um, the U.S. Treasury now has Series I savings bonds, and the I stands for inflation. It's tied to the inflation rate. And every six months, the uh, Series I savings bond changes its interest rate. The, the Fed meets and determines what the interest rate is going to be for six months. Okay, and um, you can hold the, it, it's a savings bond, okay? Mm -hmm. You hold the savings bond, you can hold it for up to a, for a year, um, but its term is five years to 30 years, okay? Mm -hmm. And if you cash it in before five years, you take a three month interest penalty hit, um, but it really is a ter returning an astounding 9.6, Two percent interest right now. Um, in May, uh, they the Feds met and they dumped it from seven point one two percent interest to nine point six two percent interest, and then they'll meet again in November and readjust the rate again. And inflation is not going down right now, so I would imagine you know it'll stay high. Um, and it's an excellent way to park some of your savings. Um, where it's secure, you know, with the U.S. government, a Series E, Series I savings bond, and you have to create an account with the U.S. Treasury. It's electronic, mm -hmm. and it's a, a bit of an arduous process to create that account um, using, I use voiceover, Mm -hmm. um, and, um, but it, it is a process, and I actually got a human being to talk to me that helped me complete some of the, pro I got halfway through and got stumped in terms of answering some security questions about, you know, creating the account. But once you've created your U.S. Treasury direct account, you can purchase these Series I savings bonds for up to $10,000 per person per year. So if you've mm -hmm. got three members in your family, you could, uh, you know, um, invest thirty thousand dollars, earning nine point six two percent interest. Wow! It's astounding the interest. Wow! Um, you blew um, me away. So, so you've <laughs> got to, you've got to, uh, you know, be patient with the process. Um, you know, to create this electronic account. Also, when you file your federal income tax return, there's a provision. If you're say you're going to get a refund from your income tax return, and mm -hmm. say you just, just say you're going to get I don't know you know a thousand dollars okay or whatever back from your income tax return, you can on that form you can attach a document that says you want a paper Series I savings bond, and they will issue it to you. Um, that's the only way you can get a paper bond. Uh, bonds used to be all paper. You know, you could buy them for the bank, the series double mm -hmm. E bonds. They used to be called war bonds for those of us that are old. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> but um, the series E bonds are paying very little percent interest, like 2%. Um, but the series I savings bonds that are through the U.S. Treasury Direct, you only want to make sure you go to that website, U.S. Treasury Direct, <laughs> okay, and um, you can create an account. <clears throat> and the U.S. government sells several products. They sell um, in other securities, which now are they're not earning very much. But the Series I savings bonds are earning nine point six two percent. It's amazing. Um, so it's 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 one way safe way to, to keep some money. So I'm going to shut up. Sorry. So no, 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 no. I'm about to ask you some questions. So don't shut up as much as yet. Now, oh, okay. 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 Go ahead. Now, how long of the process? You know, just give me a rough fuck. Like if somebody was to do that, let's say tomorrow, 
what, what mm-hmm. would you say the turnaround time is to actually get that all established? It's immediate. It, it's it's a, it, as soon as you create the account, you you tie it to you know a, a checking account or mm-hmm. an account with the bank, okay? And mm-hmm. the, the funds are transferred. You can set the date of transfer. Like mm-hmm. like I per- in November, for example, of 2021, I purchased one bond, you know, with their help. And I said, okay, now I got to go through this process again to call you in January, right? Or to try to figure this out myself, you know, to create this. And she goes, oh, no, no, you can set a date. Like, what day do you want the bond to come out in January? And I go, uh, January 20th, because <laughs> I'm thinking, okay, I, you know, I'll have some money by then. And, um, and so she said, we'll just schedule it. You just schedule it. And she walked me through how to, so you can schedule a payment uh, to be taken out, um, you know, at a certain date. Now, again, it's only $10,000 per year per person. Okay. Um, but it is a phenomenal way. It's like, I'm viewing it like it's a certificate of deposit. Okay. Right. That's tied to the inflation rate. Okay. Now, now in <clears throat> April of 2021, those series I bonds were, were paying 6%, you know, in, um, in April of 2020, they were paying what 4%. Do you know what I mean? Every six months, the fed meets and readjust the rate that they're going to pay on these inflation series I savings bonds. Okay. So <clears throat> for right now, my money is, earning the 9.62%. And then in November, they're going to meet again and just say the inflation rate. Well, you know, it's not going down. Okay. But <laughs> so not anytime know, they'll, soon, they'll, right. They'll readjust it. Right. And so, um, you know, whatever it is, you know, like they're predicting a nine to 10% raise in our social security checks, you know, for the, the who are, you know, old. <laughs> and, um, so I'm, um, you know, but the, the Fed determines the rate attached to these Series I savings bonds. That's, it's real important that you, you make sure you're buying the right product uh, from the federal government. And there's two kinds of savings bonds. There's Series E and Series I, which just stands for inflation. And so anyway. And that's the way some of the Lori. Series I, that's the one you're speaking of right. right now. And that one cost you say ten thousand. Um, if you you can you, the Series I savings bonds, you can purchase them anywhere from fifty dollars to ten thousand. Oh, okay, gotcha. Okay, so yeah. you could you know if you if, if you know you don't have ten thousand dollars to throw at it, okay, right? You know you whatever amount you want, you can um, right purchase these okay. bonds. That's good to know. I don't want to scare nobody off, but uh, that is Oh, no, 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 right. It's not $10,000 right. uh, min- uh, okay. any any amount and from 50, okay. 50 right. to, you know, to 1,000 to, you probably want to go in, you know, some increments. This is okay. Lori. Stay right there. I think Lori has a question for you. Hi, Rita. It's Hello. Lori. Hi. Um, I also do the I bonds as well. Um, one thing I did learn, banks do offer them um, there. It says on the website, uh, if you don't do a U.S. Treasury direct uh, deposit account uh, through a bank, you can get them, but you can only get them up to $5,000 a year. Were you and the rate the that gets Federal determined for inflation is um, there's a, a base rate, which is usually it's been zero you know, for years. But Correct. as the interest rates go up by the feds, that base rate, like I have one from 2009 that was, I don't know, two, two point whatever percent. It'll always get that 2%. And then the rest of the composite rate is adjusted by the interest, as you said, in May and November for the six month period. Correct. And I'm hoping someday they'll have some more of those with the base rate to it. But right now the base rate has been zero. Yes, uh, for several years. So it's just the inflation 
you know, that you're depending on, <laughs> you know, to, to make it higher. Uh, right. So you can consider these that, that when you hear the word tips, treasury inflation protected security. Um, mm -hmm. So that affects your ability of purchasing power. So, you know, at least you're maintaining a safety net that you're not losing any um, purchasing power. Yes, correct. And, you know, if inflation, I mean, you know, who knows? That's what everybody's been talking about right now is inflation, you know, is rampant. Um, but, you know, eventually it'll come back down someday, um, you know, and then these bonds will earn a, a lesser amount, you know. But for now, it's a really good uh, way to secure some of your savings and get some money. Because it, it's really good if you can get your money to work for you. Um, you know, then you're, you know, you're earning something on your hard earned money. Um, Cause if you just stick it in the savings account, it's earning nothing. And, you know, inflation will eat away at it. Mike, Michael. Hi. Hey, Michael. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I just recently uh, found out about the I bonds myself and uh, started, you know, going through the applicate, setting up my account and got through all the online part of it. And like Rita said, there's some tricky parts to it, but uh, was able to work through it. But now I've got, there's an actual, uh, uh, I think they call it a, an authorization that you have to get done. It's actually a you know physical paper that you have to go and take to a financial institution and get make uh, well kind of like a notary, but it's not a notary. But the, the actual financial institution has to stamp it or whatever, and then you send I, that in. Did you have to do I that or no? No, no, I did not. Um, this is Lori, Michael. We had to go through that. Our initial account when we set it up was fine with the, the checking account that it was associated with. But once uh -huh. you need to make a change to that, they require you to do it in paper and take it to the bank. And you used to have to get a medallion and get it, uh, a bank officer sign it. But because uh -huh. of COVID, they ref we, I got on the phone for months and had to wait 45 minutes on the phone to find out that they actually had relaxed those requirements as long as you took it to a bank and the bank uh, notarized it, uh, a bank officer notarized it, then send it in, they would change your bank account on your, on your account. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, that's, that's what happened. I, I was changing, you know, updating my uh, account that it was going to be tied to. And so that's what kicked that in then. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Otherwise your original a... account, you know, that's on there, as long as that was fine and you can continue to use that. But as soon as you try to make a change, it, the, the woman explained it over the phone from, from um, uh, the treasury department, you know, that it's, it's a, basically they're still trying to ensure security. That, right. And I, I couldn't understand it. Like you make me, I can sign up for an account online and I can do all this. And that's great. And I can put in my own, uh, save my own checking account the first time. But anytime I want to make a change, I've got to go through this long, arduous paper process and get to the bank and, and send it into you. And then you'll add it to my account. That's nuts. <laughs> I mean, obviously, yeah, if I signed in with two-factor authentication, a password <laughs> and security questions, it's got to be me. <laughs> yeah, I was going to comment, you know, earlier when George, you were talking about, you know, having a personal relationship with a banker and going in doing services. And actually I've, that's what I'm planning to do tomorrow. I've got to go see that banker and have them do that, you know, authorization, fill out the, or sign off on that authorization paper. And so I can send that in and get my account going here. So Laurie, let me, let me make sure I understand this right. Um, when you try to get this, Damn, I forgot it. What's the I, I bonds? Series yes. I savings bonds. Series mm -hmm. I savings bond. You have to go through the treasury form or can you do that at your financial institution to establish that account? Or is there a website? What is the website? U.S. Treasury, I'm sorry, Treasury Direct. Yes. Is the website. 
if you want to do it yourself, you can do it all yourself, sign up, set up your account, attach your bank account, purchase it, everything yourself independently. Mm -hmm. And as Rita said, there are some stumbling blocks. Um, I get some sighted assistance from my husband. It might be Um, advisable to probably, if you can meet with a personal bank or some um, finance person at the bank, if it is that arduous the task to complete that type of uh, paperwork, correct? I understand you can still purchase them through the bank, but Mm -hmm. that then the limit is only up to five thousand dollars a year per person, not ten. And I guess that would be treasurydirect.gov. Correct. And just be aware when you're um, there's a floating keyboard, like you know how when when you go to create your password, you know, on Mm -hmm. several, you know, you get the keyboard that comes up. Mm -hmm. Um, And this is a security feature on this website. It's a floating keyboard. So what happens is, is say you, the first letter of your password is, let's just say it's R. Okay. (laughs) So Mm -hmm. what you have to do is you have to swipe. If you're using a voiceover, you have to swipe. You cannot just hit the R. Okay, the keyboard floats. So you have to flick your finger through all the digits, all the punctuation, Q, W, E, R, and then double tap on the R. Okay. And that one letter gets entered. It's a floating keyboard. Wow. And then when you go to check your balance, you know, and you go to log in, okay, you can save that password. It'll say log into your account using blah, blah. Okay. And you do that, but then it wants your password. Okay. And that floating keyboard pops up and you've got to go through that process to enter that. But you know, it's, it's worth it. It's, it is daunting (laughs) to get it going, but once you've got it established, you could put up to 10,000 per year into this account or whatever. And I view it as a certificate of deposit that it's just, it's just sitting there. It's earning something. And in five years, I'll have, you know, interest, you know, that I was getting nothing in the bank. Is that something, like I had mentioned with CD, that I think if you do like for five years, you can't touch it until the five years is up or? Uh, You can, you have the minimum, you have to hold it for a year. I got you. Okay. Okay. So, but, and if you cash it in between one year and five years. Mm -hmm. They'll take a three month interest penalty hit. Oh, okay. Just that's the, not good. Just the, <laughs> just the interest. Okay. Right. Not, right. not the, not your balance. Okay. Right. And what happens is they automatically, as soon as you create this account and fund it, they mm-hmm. automatically withhold the first three months of interest for five years. Okay. The, gotcha. the interest doesn't show up on your account. You know what I mean? So for, um, for several months, you won't see anything deposited in your account and you're like, Hey, aren't they supposed to give me interest here? <laughs> and then finally, it starts showing up. You know. Yeah. Now every, I see why you say if if you're patient with it, you will you will see the results. Right. Exactly. Patience. Patience. You know, uh, time is a valuable thing in terms of perspective, in terms of investments, because it's if you hold stuff for the long term, it's like. You know, people are, you know, panicking with the stock market, you know, 15 to 20 percent drop in the stock market right now. Right. And it's it's not really a loss unless you take it. So it's only on it's only on paper. So if you just let it go, it will come back. But it is it's a it's a roller coaster ride. If you see your balances go down, you know what I mean? And uh, that's why this you uh, series I savings bonds are. A, a, a secure way to keep some money and it's earning some interest um, that no bank is giving you right now. And see, I like, here's my thought about it. It's almost like establishing, let's say you're going to establish like a, some type of savings account that you know you don't want to touch, you know, kind of like try to force yourself to forget about it mentally. So that like when a year's come by, you know, you're not going to touch it. It and accrued all this interest. You know, because you're not even thinking about it. Suddenly, you know, no matter what happens, you're not going to go into it. So I like, I could probably take like 500 or a thousand or something like that, put it into this, 
and a year from now, I can, you know, I'll go ahead and look at it, you know, because I may be and to see what happened and it got all that right there. So that's how I will look at it. Yes. If you, but, you know, your... I'll do it because almost like I don't even want to focus. I don't even want to think about it because if I think about it, then I might, if something emerged happen, I might want to go to it, but I want to just not even go to that. Right. Because that, that is safe and you do accrue a lot more and it would be better than a regular savings or even like you said, even a CD. Yeah, it forces you to to, to hide some money from yourself, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and so um, if you give me your email, I can send you, I saved some articles about the Series I savings bonds, if you let me know, uh, your, give, you know, whatever, and, um, and then, you know, so anyway. That's fine, yeah, my name, I don't know if you heard, or if you're able to look to see the names, my name is George Baptiste, you know, it's G-E, O R G E B A T T I S T E at gmail.com. Okay, so spell your last name again. B okay. as in boy. Uh huh. A T T. Uh huh. I S T E. Okay. At gmail.com. Gmail Correct. Okay. All right, George, I'll send you a test message and um, see if it goes through. And I'll send you this okay. article that I said, because I've shared it with several people about these I bonds. And sometimes I feel like I'm trying to sell somebody something, you know, they're like, are you, are you trying to sell something? And I'm like, no, I'm just trying to tell you that there's this savings opportunity out there. If your patient will earn you a, a money, you know, I wish I had known money. about this a long time ago. You know, I used to work for a bank uh, in Missouri and I was in the customer service area. There used to be a guy, I know his name, I still know his name, I'm not going to say it, but I do know his name. He used to call every morning. Well, he was doing, he was doing, um, I think, treasury bonds. And he always was checking his balance and the, 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 the figures were quite impressive. But some reason, oh, yeah, because I was then, in the those... fast paced call center, I didn't have the time to say, you know, tell me about this, how you do this, what did it, but I always wanted to. <laughs> yeah. Back then, they were earning a lot more. Mm -hmm. um, these, these I didn't mean to dominate. Does anybody have any questions for Laura or even Rita? They, they, they seem to be very knowledgeable about these mm -hmm. Series I savings bonds. Yes, the name is Bridget Dolger, and I came in a little late, but I was wondering if you can send me information about the I bond. I would like to get more information about it because it sounds interesting, but I came in a little late. Um, Michael, can I send this to you or uh, what, what's a good way to get uh, the information out to the group? Yeah, if you want to send it to me and then I can uh, post it where people can access it. People Great. on our website. Okay. And it, it's just a compilation of articles that I've kept about the I bonds. And there's even a step by step about how to create the account. It's like eight steps. Uh -huh. You know, step one, do this. Step two, do this. Uh, so I will send that to you. Uh, and then people can uh, yep. uh, go, you know, you'll post it on the iBug. Uh huh. Yeah, okay. I mean, I, I I found that just reading the treasurydirect.gov website, yes, yes, it, it it pretty much tells you everything you would want to know about it too. It gives you very correct. Detail. So correct. I'd recommend that too. Yeah, uh, welcome to the welcome to the uh, the meeting, Bridget. Glad you was able to join us. Well, Bridget, you. Where you, what what state are you from? Where, where are you calling us from? From Atlanta, Georgia. Atlanta, Georgia. Okay. Hi, Atlanta. Yes, mm -hmm. Okay. Anybody else got any uh, questions for Rita or Laura or, or me about anything that we've discussed thus far? This is great information. Uh, Laura, thanks for being, thanks for chiming in. I mean, I, I, every time I do these, I always come away with something as well. And I definitely came away with something tonight. Well, um, Michael, Sandy, unfortunately, since my guest speaker couldn't make it, that was, that was, I had reserved a lot of time for him. 
I'm, I don't have anything else. <laughs> I know it's only 725 right now. I know we're supposed to go to eight. No, that, I mean, that's fine. If, yeah, if there's uh, no other questions or, yeah, mo all of us are, or most of us aren't really that knowledgeable as far as other, uh, you know, yeah. financial things that. Uh, yeah, this may be something I may revisit later. I indicate, like I say, I'll, I'm going to talk with him, get what I can, and then I'll, if y'all want to post that on the website, that's fine. Because I know he, he's he's very, I've talked with him before, and he's very knowledgeable. I actually met him on Clubhouse. <laughs> yeah, and just a disclaimer, I, iBug doesn't uh, endorse any anything that's being uh, talked about here. So please check it out yourself. And Exactly, exactly. Just like I, I even said at the beginning, anything I may suggest or state, I don't want to change up anything that anybody is doing as to how they organize or do their finance. These are just some tips, some things to discuss. If something is working for you, by all means, stick with that. Uh, however you're doing your money, just stick with that. Whatever apps you're using, that's fine. I'm not trying to change you. We just have an open discussion and discussing ideas that I present to people. And I even let them know this is just something like sort of like a model, but it's not the perfect one. There's nothing set in stone for anybody to follow. This is Jody. Hey, Jody. Yes, I wanted to get back for a minute about the um, checks that you were talking about, the low vision checks. The, you know, they're uh -huh. business size. They're business size checks, and you have to be persistent because I was trying to get them for my mother-in-law at her bank, and they kept telling her, "Oh, we don't have anything like that." And of course, you know, unless people, you know, dig into the catalog of, of checks that are available, or unless they know, they're just going to give you that quick answer. And I said, no, 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 I know they've got them. So I actually called the bank for her. And mm -hmm. uh, I, I talked to the bank manager, and she mm -hmm. was absolutely horrified that my mother-in-law would have been told that because she knew about them, you know. Mm -hmm. So she went out of her way to uh, call my mother-in-law and, and not only to get the checks for her, but she also offered her a large print bank statement, uh, which is also available from a lot of banks too, in addition to Braille. Right. And so, you know, so if you if you want to get those checks and they they not only are large, you know, large low vision checks, but they're also they have a large uh, re register to come with them for low vision. Exactly. And and exactly. but you have to be persistent. If the bank says, oh, we don't have them, yes you do. You know, check your catalog. Yes you do, yes you do, yes you do. And then the other thing I was going to comment about is is you can also get check register apps. Uh, there's an app for that. You know, um, so if you want to if you want to keep track of your account in an accessible way, you can do that on your smartphone too. Yeah, and, and Jody's correct. Yeah, sometimes you do have to stand up and advocate. And, and, and for one thing, too, here's what a lot of banks do, and a lot of even bank employees don't know, like even tellers definitely don't know. But most banks, especially the major ones, they don't print like they own checks. They go through like, I think I think it's called Deluxe Checks Printing System. Or yeah, something Deluxe like that. or Heartland, yes. Exactly. That's where yeah. when you order checks, you got like different designs, that's where they come from. This is why you cannot go into the bank and just get like a box of checks because they come from there. And so and that's where the um, low vision checks are coming from as well. And they are available. So if a bank tell you they don't have them, yes, they do. I mean, I've had, this is how I know that a lot of employees sometimes are not aware of all the different services. I think one time I went to use the ATM, something simple like this. And the teller thought the ATM was broken because when I plug in my, headphones to use the accessibility features of the ATM, nothing comes up on the screen. I mean, it blanks the screen. So she thought the ATM was not working. She thought I may have done something wrong. I said, no, ma'am, it's working. I can hear it through my headset. And that just showed that she was knowledgeable of the accessibility features of that particular ATM, which is another thing I should have discussed too, but I know people have already left, um, that a lot of your major banks too do have accessible ATMs. And that's why it's good if you can carry around a headset with a 3.5 plug at the end. That's what you usually can plug them into. And it, it gives a voice um, activation feature of the ATM. Some of them have the voice eloquence. 
um, reading the screens and telling you the prompts and the features which you need to press. And then some of them have another voice. I forget what that lady name is called because uh, uh, maybe one of the banks that I use has this. And then they got some banks that have this horrible auto, auto bot sounding type thing too. Different ATMs have different ones, depends on who designed the machine. But that's why it's sometimes good if you want to independently do transactions, even through the ATM, uh, most of them are set up that yes, your screen will be blank so no one else can see what's going on. That's kind of like an advantage for us. You don't have to worry about nobody trying to read the screen or see your information. Um, but they're, all, they're easy to operate. I mean, it'll tell you, uh, you know, press one if you want more instructions or press six if you don't want more instructions. They're, they're very maneuverable to operate independently. Okay, anybody else, any other thoughts, questions? Yeah, Mike, Michael. Go ahead, Michael. Uh, yeah, I was just gonna bring up, you know, you're talking about, uh, well, checks and cash, and I've pretty much gotten away from using either of those. I mean, every, pretty much everything I do is electronically or through apps now. And, you know, we've, we've done some various uh, other iBug sessions where we've gone over different apps for, you know, if you want to transfer money to other people and you, these would be tied to your uh, bank account and you just use the app and can send money to, you know, other people with the uh, Square Cash app, the uh, Venmo, uh, Zelle. And there's numerous others that uh, are, are out there, so that makes it nice and simple, you know, nice, easy way to do. Uh, that is correct, and they also are very accessible. Yeah, the, the Cash App, the Venmo, the Zelle. That is a, pay, and I'm PayPal, like you, Michael. Get, PayPal is the other one. PayPal, exactly. Mm -hmm. I'm like you. I like I said, it used to be a time the only time I would write it, but even now, I think I may write a ticket from paying like my rent or something like that. But even now they got like an online thing that I don't even have to go and get the money or don't even give them a check anymore. But I I don't, I can't even recall the last time I have even written a check. I mean, even when you go into whatever, if you go to a place of worship right now, you know, they've even set up to where you don't have to write out a check if you don't want to, you know, they have like a way of using Giblified apps or using cash apps or something like that. You know, everything is so secured now. And I'm glad that it is, extremely accessible as well right. and like you indicated too just swapping money between between us you know individuals you know you can just send somebody to their cell you know, just by knowing their phone number or email address yeah of course i forgot apple pay and uh, google pay that's correct i haven't used device. google pay yet but i have used apple pay I had a friend of mine from New Orleans who told me I just need to get with the program because I just wasn't using Apple Pay. And I think they even took my phone, downloaded the app and showed me how simple it was. And, and uh, you know, so that, that's a good way of actually even shopping. Walmart don't do Apple Pay though. Yeah, they've got their own, whatever, I forget what it's mm -hmm. called. But their own pay, electronic payment with the Walmart app. Okay, that's true. Cool. All right, guys, well, listen, I wanna thank if it was, let me just give one more opportunity. Does anybody else have anything else they want to share or say or suggest or comment on, on any material Jody. that was discussed tonight? Go ahead, Jody. Yeah, I just, you know, low tech. There's also check writing guides. You mentioned signature guides, but there's the check I writing did. guides too, which are, okay, that's handy. Uh, can, I, can you also give your email address again? My email address? Yeah. My email address is uh, my first and last name, G-E-O-R-G-E-B-A-T-T. <laughs> I'm sorry, I was laughing at a text message I just got. I S T E at I S T E. Okay. Yeah. At gmail.com. Okay. Okay. Good. Very good. Well, yeah, thank I you keep for it simple. tonight. Yeah, I want to thank everybody for showing up uh, tonight. There's just some great information that we've shared and 
take it forward, take it, use it, share it. Uh, next month, um, Mike, I don't know if you got my last text message, but I think I would like to do that. Basically, let me just put it out there in the atmosphere. <clears throat> I'm originally from New Orleans. New, New Orleans is known for some great food. So I think I'm going to talk to you guys on how to prepare a popular dish, and I may even do it live at It's iBugs Life next, the fourth Thursday, which would be August uh, 4, 11, 18, 25th. It made gumbo? It's not gumbo. You know what? And I've not been gumbo. telling myself for at least seven years, I need to learn how to cook that because I do love gumbo. I... I live alone right now. It'd be hard to eat all of that, but um, I'm, I'm going to fix it. I'm going to do that. I'm, I just need to get a basic foundation, how to prepare it. And once I do that, making a roux is the most challenging part. And I've asked some people, you know, what they do. And it's just knowing, uh, I've been told you just got to know the proper amount of flour, proper amount of water, or as it might be flour and oil or something, whatever it is. Once I establish that, because I know all the ingredients that go in it. I know about the shrimp. I know about the crab, um, the smoked sausages I may put in there. Some people put chicken wings. I may not do that. Uh, some filet. Filet is a particular spice. So I know what goes in there. I just got to know exactly how to measure some what to put in. Once I perfect it, yeah, I may come in here and do that. No, I'm, 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 I'm going to do some New Orleans style red beans and rice. Oh, yum. So that should definitely fill up the time. So come next week. You know, Mike, I hope I make you hungry. <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll come over to your house and uh, do the <laughs> thing from your house. Not yeah. a problem. At least I have power. Well, I, ain't gonna, I, don't, I don't want to jinx you on that. <laughs> I don't want to jinx myself either. <laughs> All right. Thanks, everybody, for coming out. Thank you, George. Thanks, See George. Good meeting, everybody. Thanks, Michael. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Laura should have a thinker too, but she's gone. <laughs> All right. Take care, everybody. Good night. I guess I'm supposed to stop the recording here.